Welcome back to Music Kingdom. While the 1970s is my preferred decade of music and artistry, and I would say a majority of what I listen to most of the time, I must admit, throughout my life, I really have never taken the time to explore the work and the artistry of David Bowie. So in this video, we will be listening to, giving a music theory breakdown for, and I will have the guts to review after having heard it just for the first time, Life on Mars by David Bowie. Hang tight. Hey music lovers, my name is Francis. If you'd like to support the work I put into these videos, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support the channel even further, you'll find Music Kingdom's Patreon and other affiliate links in the description below. All right, now before we give the song a listen, let's briefly talk Life on Mars by David Bowie. And this is usually the part of my videos where I will give some historical context, trivia facts about either the album, the artist, or the song we're listening to. However, uh, I am going to assume that most of you watching this will know more about David Bowie than myself, since he is, as mentioned, someone I am now beginning to explore and not someone that I've been studying for many years. Having said that, even still, I will be giving some information about the song and the album just in case someone stumbles upon this video who might not know much about David Bowie. Otherwise, I will encourage you guys who know much more than myself to give more information, facts, trivia, history, context, in the comments below. Life on Mars was written by Bowie himself on his fourth studio album titled Hunky Dory, released in 1971. Now the story of how the song came to be is a bit interesting, and the story goes that there was a French version of the very iconic song My Way, popularized by Frank Sinatra, written by Paul Anka. Now prior to this, David Bowie was considered to be chosen as the person who would create and write the English version of this original French version. However, due to his, at the time, obscurity, he was declined, he was rejected, and they gave it to Paul Anka, who would then write the very iconic My Way and popularized, as mentioned, by Frank Sinatra. A bit confusing, I realize, at least for me, but essentially what you need to know is that Life on Mars, in some way, shape, or form, is a parody of Paul Anka's song, My Way, popularized by Frank Sinatra. In addition to that, Life on Mars more specifically is the story of a lonely girl who goes to the movies to escape her issues back at home. Now, speaking for myself, I was curious why why is it called Life on Mars, but apparently it has absolutely no relation to Mars itself. The song was called Life on Mars because of a then media frenzy regarding the United States and the Soviet Union. Now, according to critics, and I'm using my notes for this one, it's almost a mini opera inside of a four minute single building to a stirring climax. And Life on Mars is considered by biographers and reviewers as one of Bowie's finest songs, with many describing it as a masterpiece. Praise is also given to Bowie's vocal performance and growth as a songwriter. So I am very intrigued to hear it for the first time. Now, lastly, on the subject of Life on Mars, it is worth mentioning because the song's music is so praised, but in addition to Bowie's own voice and his songwriting, this song has the renowned pianist Rick Wakeman, a string section thrown in there as well, and Bowie's own backing band, Spiders from Mars. Now, real quickly, for what it's worth, a quick disclaimer, as mentioned earlier in the video, I do not listen to David Bowie, but I do not want that to be misconstrued as me not liking David Bowie or being ignorant to how great David Bowie is. As mentioned, I love the 1970s, whether we're talking Pink Floyd, The Eagles, Chicago, The Bee Gees, Genesis, The Jacksons, The Carpenters, so on and so forth. I live and breathe the 1970s. It's just that David Bowie is someone I never really got turned on to or that I never really took the time to properly explore. So any criticism I might have at any point during this video is not me hating on Bowie by any means. It's just me blindly reviewing a song I'm listening to for the first time by someone who I do have reverence for, appreciation for, and respect for. All right, with all that out of the way, it's time to give the song a listen. And in this video, I will be trying something a little bit different. In the past, I have always listened to the song start to finish myself, but in the editing process to avoid copyright strikes and to have a video that's just a watchable length, I will cut from one part of the song to the other. But in a recent Metallica review I did, I got a lot of comments from people saying that I should instead just pause the song talk about the song and then resume the song, which to me sounds less enjoyable than just kind of smoothly editing it. But I will try that in this video because I listen to what you guys say and I want it to be as enjoyable as possible. And as always, be sure to stick around after the song for a music theory breakdown from our expert. And then we're gonna divide the song into various categories, reviewing it and arriving at an overall score. It's a god awful small affair to the girl with the mousy hair 
But her mummy is yelling no And her daddy has told her to go But her friend is nowhere to be seen Now she walks through her sunken dream Amazing piano so far And his lyrics create such an image Oh god But the film is a sad thing for But she's lived it ten times or more She could spit in the eyes of fools And say I Wow. Very atmospheric. It's a freaky show. Take a look at the Oh, It's so sharp. Wonder if you never know. Who's in the best selling show? Is there life on Mars? Nice vocals too. Nice features of the guitar. It almost sounds like an interlude from the first chorus to the second verse. So thought so far, it starts raw, right? And Initially, it's the piano and the lovely lyrics, which I also was expecting because I, as mentioned, respect Bowie, but I wasn't necessarily expecting the lyrics to be as poetic and as good at creating imagery as they are. Stylistically, it reminds me a bit of Elton John. In addition to that, however, I am very intrigued by the usage of strings. That is what has blown me away so far in this song. Given its era, I wasn't sure what the production would seem like. Some productions back in this era were very intricate and complex. Others, because of the era, were a bit more simplistic. This one already, though, is such a put-together package that feels very artistic and very inspired, which we'll touch on later uh, in this video. It's on America's tortured brow That Mickey Mouse has grown up a cow and now the workers have struck for fame Cause Lennon's on sale again See the mice in their million hordes From Ibiza to the Norfolk broads Rule Britannia is out of bounds to my mother, my dog, and clowns But the film is a sad thing for Cause the I wrote strings. it ten times or more and the piano is going crazy It's about to be rich again As I ask you to vote for some singers Piking in the dance hall Wow Oh man, look at those cavemen go It really is stunning it's a freaky shallow Take a look at the old man Beating up the wrong guy Oh man, wonder if you'll ever know Who's in the best-selling show Is there life on more? Perfect usage of the guitar, in my opinion. Wow. What an epic finish, very climactic, right? Initial thoughts before we get to the music theory breakdown and then their full review of the song would be wow And I am really they only had to pause once because it is a relatively shorter song I'm just hoping I don't get a copyright strike But initial thoughts would be wow because I don't know exactly what I was expecting really not knowing <laughs> Any songs by David Bowie other than under pressure with Queen's early 80s. I think it's 82. So yes I, I went into that pretty blind 
And I want to acknowledge that I did choose a Bowie song that is, to my knowledge, mainstream, that is very well known. It is not by any means a deep cut. What I'm getting at is I was expecting something that sounded a bit more mainstream. And even though mainstream in the early 70s is in my opinion above and beyond mainstream today, I still was expecting something a little bit more radio friendly, a little bit more simple or generic, but instead, what I got was this artistic masterpiece that would fit the structure of a 340 single, essentially made for the radio. And while I have heard a lot about Bowie's creativity and artistry, I was expecting that to be more in his deep cut songs that I wouldn't even know where to start with because I'm not familiar with his catalog, but songs like that, right? That might be six, seven, eight minutes of just pure abstract creativity. But no, in this song, you have very impressive lyrics. You have a very beautiful structure and composition with different chord changes and melodic beauty as well. And then the production, as mentioned when I paused, really blew me away in this one as well because for this era of music, to have an exemplary production, in my opinion, was a bit more rare, at least than it is now with the technology we have to make music. And so for me, the decision to throw a guitar in there, to throw the strings in there, to throw the piano in there, on top of an otherwise very instrumental and gorgeous arrangement left me very pleasantly surprised. Now, before we move on to the full review where I'm grading each category more specifically, what I like, what I don't like, and giving them each a score, let's first go to the experts corner for a music theory breakdown and to hear what he has to say. Welcome to the Experts Corner. This is Life on Mars by David Bowie. This song is in the time signature of 4-4, standard time, and it's in the key of F major. However, in the choruses, it actually changes keys and is in the key of B flat. So for today's music theory breakdown, I actually want to talk about the choruses because I think that's the part that has the most musically interesting moments. Like I said, the chorus is in the key of B flat. And the first four chords of it are actually pretty typical, pretty standard, nothing special. B flat, E flat, G minor. So like I said, that is pretty standard. However, after the G minor, it goes to F sharp augmented. That is a chord you don't hear often at all, especially in popular music. So after it goes to the F sharp augmented, it goes to F major then F minor, that kind of walk down is also very uncommon. Then you have this little bass walk down. Then it goes to C minor seven, and then E flat minor. And then the chorus repeats. So, I know that probably sounded very convoluted. Let me show it to you in action. some very cool stuff. To be honest, I've never really listened to David Bowie's music. I can maybe name one or two songs. So this one was brand new to me when I first heard it like yesterday. And one of the first things I noticed was how compositionally impressive it is. It's imaginative, it's unique. You can't name a single other song out there that has these chord progressions, unlike so many popular songs of today. Even though I haven't even listened to much of David Bowie at all, I can tell that this song has that signature David Bowie sound. And I still have yet to decide if his sound is really my thing. I'm thinking I maybe should start listening to more of his stuff. But after my first impression of giving it full listen through, analyzing its chords, I was very impressed. And I wanna give it a seven and a half out of 10. Back to you, Francis. A very special thank you to our expert for providing a music theory breakdown and giving the song a very healthy seven and a half out of 10. And now at long last, it's time to break apart the song into different categories, grading them each and arriving at an overall score. Starting out with composition specifically, I'm inclined to give this song a very strong eight out of 10. Now I assume that our music expert already talked about how this song is composed and structured, so I will keep this part brief. What I liked about the song, especially melodically speaking, was just how gorgeous it was. And as mentioned earlier, I was a bit surprised with this song being a 340 single, something that is kind of fit for the radio, I was expecting something to sound a bit more mainstream, not to knock David Bowie's reputation or his artistry, but 
that is what you expect with a song so popular of this nature. But instead you get something so intricate and so sophisticated and so creative even still in spite of its constraints regarding time that absolutely is genius in my opinion. Structurally speaking, yes, the chord progressions are unique. However, I'm otherwise taken back by just how creative and imaginative the song is with its composition. But subjectively speaking, I just can't really go above an eight because really eight and a half, nines or tens are going to be reserved more for songs that will tend to be seven, eight, nine, ten minutes. That is just an abstract musical composition that blows your mind. But for what it is, very well composed in my opinion and an eight out of 10 is still great. Moving on to production specifically, in my opinion, this is a part of the song that is really strong and really shine. So I'll be giving it an eight and a half out of 10. I have already spoken quite a bit about the production, so I don't mean to be redundant and I'll try to keep this part brief. But as mentioned, the decision and the creativity and the artistry and attention to detail to go beyond creating something simple and catchy, but to create something so intricate with the usage of the piano, with the usage of his harmonies as well, how they mix them, the clever insight, in my opinion, to know when exactly to put a guitar in there, to know exactly, in my opinion, how to use the strings in such an effective way that it changes changes the tone of the song. And of course, as mentioned, the exquisite piano, feeling kind of like a home base of the song that kind of centers you and gives the song its initial mood from the start until the finish. Personally speaking, I am blown away by this production and I should have expected nothing less from David Bowie given his reputation. Up next, we have lyrics, which I am also giving a very strong eight and a half out of 10. And you guys who know more about Bowie than I do will have to let me know in the comments if lyrics are really part of what his reputation is centered upon, to my, albeit limited knowledge, I've always just assumed it was his ability to create abstract work, very artistic work. I never, in my mind, necessarily associated him as a brilliant lyricist. Not to say I thought he was bad, do not get me wrong. It's just not something I think of when I think of David Bowie or when I hear someone mention David Bowie. And in this song, from the start, you immediately get the sense of imagery. He's painting you a beautiful picture all while doing it tastefully, all while doing it poetically, in my opinion. And they don't get redundant. Even songs that do have very well written enough lyrics can still, after a while, feel redundant. Like, okay, by halfway through the song or by the end of the song, you're kind of tired Tired of them. But for me, I felt intertwined with the lyrics, following along closely to the story he was telling from start to finish, but then you're hit with this brilliant composition and exceptional production. I don't mean to insult David Bowie by saying this, but I was genuinely taken back by his ability to effectively and poetically, beautifully, and simply, to some extent, tell a story and compose the music to go hand in hand with it. Moving on to vocals, this is where I might piss off some very, rightfully, loyal fans of David Bowie. I'm going to give the vocals of this song a six and a half out of 10, which is still good, right? It's not a two, it's not a four, it's not even a five, it's above average. I would consider a six and a half good, just not quite great, which would be eight and above. And I would have to disagree with the critics who praise the vocals in this song. I'm not saying that David Bowie has necessarily a bad voice, and I have to say, I have not really heard any other David Bowie, so there might be other songs that would just leave me speechless with my jaw dropped on the floor with the vocal ability that this man had. However, having said that, with this song specifically, I just wasn't all too impressed. Whether we're talking about vibrato, whether we're talking about vocal runs, whether we are talking about belting extremely difficult notes, whatever it may be that can make a song an exceptional vocal performance, I didn't really get that in this song. And yes, don't get me wrong, he did have vocal stretches in this song where he was kind of pushing it and it was pretty enough. And I do think he has a nice voice, but having heard what the critics had to say about the song and how to some extent it was a masterclass of what a great vocalist he was, I would just disagree because when I think of that, I will think of anyone else, say Frank Sinatra, Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Phil Collins, Celine Dion, Freddie Mercury, or even if we're going a bit more current, say the lead singer of Panic at the Disco, Brendan Urie. Exceptional vocalists, right? These people have some of the greatest performances you'll ever hear in your life. And so I was expecting a bit more of that in terms of just being floored. And by the end of the song, while I did feel it was a fine vocal delivery and a solid vocal performance, I couldn't help but feel that this, specifically speaking, was the low part or the weak part of the song. Now arriving at our final category of originality and or inspiration, I am inclined to give this song a very rare nine out of 10. The reason being, when I think of this category of originality and or inspiration, 
Another synonym for that would be vision, right? Is this song unique? Does this song have authenticity? Does it have an artistic identity? Is it very creative? And ultimately, is it something that historically stands out and does not really blend with the rest? In my opinion, yes. Hell yes, and I'm not just saying that because this song is very iconic, because this song is one of his most popular hits ever. No, if we were to ignore the song's reputation and pretend it's some obscure deep cut, I would still be blown away with the originality and vision that the song has. And to get the very rare nine, yes, you do have to have a composition that is very creative. Yes, you do have to have a production that absolutely blows your mind. And of course, you have to have very inspired lyrics that tell an original story and do it in a way that you haven't heard before. And I will say, having heard a lot about David Bowie, his creativity, his artistry, his originality, this song absolutely makes the case for me. I'm beginning to see and agree with what all the hype is about. So now if we add it all up, throw in the expert score and average it out. Life on Mars by David Bowie from his fourth studio album, Hunky Dory from 1971, gets a very strong and very respectable eight out of 10. As mentioned, admittedly being someone who does not know all too much about David Bowie, nor his full extensive catalog of music, I went ahead and went with a song that was considered mainstream, that was a more popular track by him. So what I'm getting at, and what you'll have to let me know about in the comments below, is I assume there are other deep cuts, lesser known or more obscure songs by David Bowie that I probably would give an eight and a half, a nine, a nine and a half, or a 10, which I've never given out. But for what it is, how popular it is, how mainstream it is, an eight out of 10 is considered, in my opinion, great. But of course, in the comments below, let me know if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, if I'm a little warmer, if I'm a little colder, if I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. To you Bowie fans out there, prescribe to me and other people new to Bowie watching this video your favorite songs, your favorite next steps, your favorite tracks or albums for any of us who are wanting to learn more about him to explore. And of course, on this channel, we listen to and review music. Some songs that we're very familiar with, other songs like this one that are just blind reviews. So of course, let us know what you'd like for this channel to review next. As mentioned, if you'd like to support myself and the work I put into these videos, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel even further, you'll find Music Kingdom's Patreon and other affiliate links in the description below. This has been another edition of Music Kingdom. Thank you so much for listening with me, and I'll look forward to jamming with you in the next one.